as a homicide detective, you are as strong as your word. And in the community, if your word is not strong, if your word is not your bond, you might as well just go do something else. Just by knowing those police officers, that is what encouraged me to join the police department. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. At first, I did not want to be a police officer. I did not like police. The only police I enjoyed being around were the ones at the Police Boys and Girls Club. But I was 20, I just turned 20. What well, at the time, when I thought about it, I was 22 years old. I had a four-year-old daughter, and I was broke. Uh, my daughter's mom, she kept, well, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say pressing. She was doing what she's supposed to do. She kept requesting money for me to help take care of my daughter. At the time, all I had was a part-time job. I was going to UDC part-time. My rent was $210 a month. So you can imagine how much money I had left over to take care of a child. So I had no other choice but to find full-time employment. When I saw an advertisement in the Washington Post that police officers were being hired at $22,750, I thought that was a lot of money in 1986. And I was like, wow, you know, that's a lot of money. So I filled out the application. Um, I submitted it and I still wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do. I consulted with a couple of friends. Um, my best friend at the time was um, April Kinsale. Me and her talked about it and she as well had a young child. And she said, Mitch, you have to do what you have to do to take care of your daughter. And I was very hesitant because People just didn't want to be police. So I, I just, you know, prayed on it. And when Mr. Borton contacted me, I was shocked that he contacted me because he was just one of the officers who I just mentioned, who was um, one of my coaches in the Boys and Girls Club. So when I found out that he was my recruiter, I felt more warm towards the idea. I felt more comfortable. And he led me throughout the entire process on um, what it would take to become a police officer. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was different. I was looking forward to it at this particular point, even though I was still very hesitant because just being a police officer just, just wasn't a cool thing. So I went through the process and um, I got accepted. And when they notified me that I was accepted to um, report to the police academy in October of 1986, I was excited but nervous, and I had to really, really look at myself to see if that's something I wanted to do because I knew that was going to just change my life, but I was more concentrating on changing my daughter's life. I had to help her mother take care of her. Um, being a young father during that time period was uh, pretty hard. No one was really making a lot of money. Of course, we had drugs on the streets. Um, a lot of people were doing robberies um, and just all kinds of negative things in order to um, get money, but I just wasn't I wasn't set up like that. I wasn't built like that. Just that four hours at the, um, the Fourth District Police Station was enough for me to realize that the life of crime just just wasn't me. There's no way in the world I was going to be going to prison trying to make money where I can just get a job and, and make money. So dealing with the idea of becoming a police officer and being a young father, that was my priority because I most definitely had to um, help provide for my daughter. And just being a young father during that time period as a black man was, was, was hard because the challenges of the negativity of the things in our neighborhood were some of the things that sent a lot of us in the wrong direction. And I just fortunate that I was not one of those. And I saw people getting out of nice cars and you know everybody was happy and and full of joy, people were shaking hands and hugging each other, and I walked by myself. And I was hesitant, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to turn around. I was, the, the closer I got to that door, the more I wanted to like just leave, because I wasn't sure this was something I really wanted to do, because the night before I didn't sleep, I was dead flat out nervous. And to go inside the building, 
I started seeing people that I recognize. I started to get a little more comfortable. I saw a um, few people I went to Cadoza with. So now I'm like, wow, I mean, everybody trying to be a police officer? So as time went on, short period later, we were in the gymnasium, and that's when we met um, some of the staff members there, some of the officers there. And one of the first persons I met was Lieutenant Loyal Duckett. I already got comfortable with just being there, but he like barked the order at me. And my first instinct was like, dude, excuse my language. I'm like, who the fuck you talking to? And he like got in my face so close. He was, he, he was spitting in my face as he was talking to me. And I'm sitting there like, hold up, man. But, you know, he like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I'm like, dude. And he just like, you know, he, he was like a, just a physical presence, short, stocky. He was, oh, he was strong as an ox. And I guess he was letting me know that he was in charge. So I left it alone. I backed down. I felt like a punk. Uh, again, excuse my language. I felt like a bitch. Um, because here it is. This grown man is in my face. And those who are on the police department, or those who have been through the military, you know what I'm talking about. And I just didn't think this was going to work out for me. And coming from the hood in D.C., you, you're not from the military, so you don't know anything about that kind of stuff. So I had a very difficult time doing the formations that we had to do on a regular basis. And Lieutenant Duckett, it seemed like he was just like, man, I'm going to get this dude. So he come yelling and screaming. And the thing about it, when he come yelling and screaming at you, it's in front of everybody. It ain't no taking you around a corner. He started barking at me again, and man, I wanted to fight this guy so bad. Now, I didn't think I was going to win, but it's just that this guy is steady yelling and screaming and shouting and just, oh my God, this, this dude was making my days miserable. Another thing that bothered me was when um, we started wearing the uniforms, the gate line of your shirt had to be in line with your brass belt buckle, which had to be sparkling clean, your sh boots, shoes, whatever had to be shining, your name tag had to be straight, your badge had, I mean, everything had to be in order. If you were not in order, your whole class was penalized. And I had a problem with that structure because I wasn't a guy that wore suits. I had one sport coat. I wasn't into, I was just into jeans, t-shirts, just things like that. And one day he was going down the line looking at everybody and out the corner of his eye, he saw me trying to get straight. He marched down there real quick, got in my face and just, I'm talking like, like this. It was like, you have a problem. And I, and I was trying not to breathe, man. I, was, I thought I was going to pass out because this dude, man, he just intimidated you. But I'm sitting there like, no, sir, with a straight face. He like, then he started looking me up and down. And all, I was like, oh, shit. I just knew everything was crooked. He's looked, and then I don't know how he saw this. He said, this is what he said. I knew he was probably messing with me because I knew he was lying because one of the other guys cleaned my brass for me because we had to keep brass with us in our lockers. So another guy cleaned my belt buckle for me because I just didn't know how to keep it clean. He looked at the belt buckle and said he saw, it said it wasn't um, shiny. He saw a spot on it. It was, it was dull. I wanted to say, dude, you lying. But I couldn't say that. And I would say, sorry, sir. So he's like, see me in my office. And I was like, oh, shit. So once we finish the morning exercise, I go to his office. And he was sitting in the chair. And, I, man, I'm, I thought, I ain't going to lie, I thought I was about to get fired. In a way, I was happy to be getting up out of there. Because now I got an excuse to go tell everybody I got fired. I'm good, boom, boom, boom. But he said, sit down. So I sat in the chair and he looked me directly in the eyes and he said, you're not from the military, are you? I said, no, sir. He said, um, well, here we do things different. I said, yes, sir. He said, just relax, just relax. I said, yes, sir. He said, relax. I'm still saying yes, sir, because I'm nervous not to talk to him in the proper way because dude was just a physical presence. So finally he said, look, man, I'm going to be honest with you. And I said, yes, sir, again. He said, look, I know you're not from military, he said, I gotta stay on guys like you because you all don't have that discipline that the military guys have. He said, I can tell you gonna make a good police officer. When you get on the streets, you have to be able to deal with things that can set you off. He said, if you can deal with me 
bothering you every day. He said, if you could deal with the structure, if you could deal with me in your face. He said, when I got in your face that first day, he said, I felt you wanted to hit me. He said, but you, 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 you stood your ground. You stayed respectful. He said, that's how you have to be on the streets because on the streets, when people get in your face, when people curse you out, when people spit on you, you can't react. He said, so yeah, you can't react in an academy. And the military guys are used to this, but you guys from the hood, y'all not used to this. So I'm going to be hard on you guys. He said, just hang in there. You're going to be fine. And I was like, whew. I'm glad he explained to me on how the process worked because if you don't go in there with the right attitude, you would do something. And I'm going to be honest with what I'm about to say. Just, this is very honest. What he explained to me was so real because if you cannot take what they dish out in that police academy, it will cost you your career. Because you will go on the streets, you're going to abuse someone, you're going to do something illegal. You're going to do something that's going to cost you your job. So I most definitely appreciate um, Lieutenant Duckett for turning me into the police officer that I became.